As you know, May's Asian American Pacific Islander Heritage Run, and we are kicking off with a special story of injustice and the writing of a 77 year old wrong. But in order to fully understand, stand the story, we must start at the beginning. Hannah Hainu was born in Mount Vernon, Washington in 1926 and was one of seven children born to immigrant parents who came to America from Japan in the early 1900s to forge for a better opportunity. In 1941, when Japan declared war on the United States, Hannah was living on a farm outside of Conway. As a 15-year-old student in her sophomore year at Mount Vernon High School, she had aspirations like any typical American teenager. However, Executive Order 9066, issued February 1942, barred the people of Japanese ancestry from traveling more than five miles from their homes with a mandatory curfew at 8 p.m. By the summer of 1942, her life would change forever, as nearly one of nearly 120,000 people of Japanese ancestry were forced into internment camps and scattered across Western United States. The family was given one week's notice to move back to their homes, their bank accounts frozen, and their assets seized. Each member of the family was only allowed two suitcases. 24 members of her extended family in total were placed in the camps for the next four years. Hannah experienced incarceration at the internment camps in Tool Lake, California, and later Heart Mountain, Wyoming. After a graduation ceremony was held on May 3rd, I had the honor of interviewing her about her time at MVHS. Please join us as we look back to a much different time in our history. How did you feel about leaving Mount Vernon? That's a very, very emotional question because I didn't want to leave school and uh, it was my connection to good friends and uh, I was very very sorry to leave. I bet. I guess our next question is were you involved in any things like any activities on campus? I played the violin in grade school and I continued the activity in uh, at Mount Vernon High. When you walked onto campus, did things feel different than when you first started? I, I was very, very excited to come into the building and then I saw the bulldog. And I, I thought, oh, this is it. So, do you remember your last day here at Mount Vernon and how that felt? I, it was a very, very emotional time because I had some dear friends in school and that meant that I was to leave. And uh, so I was very reluctant, but it was one of the orders to leave. I guess our next question would be is, how did the community react to you having to leave? And how did students, like fellow students at Mount Vernon react? All I can remember is that I felt sorry because I had to leave my friends and I didn't know why I hadn't done anything, but uh, I had to leave and that was very, very difficult. I must say the people were very, very nice. Many of them were sorry that I had to leave and go to camp because we were forced to go to camp. and. Uh, Many, many people were very sympathetic to the fact that we had to leave. Um, I had a very nice principal of uh, Conway. And uh, after uh, we were put in camp, we moved to Minneapolis, Minnesota. And uh, one day there was a knock on our door and here he was in Minneapolis. He had come to visit his cousin and he knew that we were there somewhere. Evidently he found out by some friends or whatever, but here he was at our doorstep. And it meant a great deal to us to know that he, we still had friends left in, uh, in, uh, on the coast. 
So while you were still at Mount Vernon, what was your favorite thing to do with friends or around the valley? We played a lot of games, uh, hopscotch and um, all this jump, but we didn't have the luxury of having toys that were purchased. We had to make our own game and play them. So my next question would be, do you remember what your first day was like at camp and how did that make you feel? In the town of Conway, we were the only Japanese Americans there. And then when evacuation time came, we were ordered to bring only what we can carry. That means a suitcase apiece. And we were to meet them in, in the downtown Conway, which is about five miles away from here. And when we were going to board that train, we made a step up and into the train and I saw nothing but Japanese. It was a shock to my life. I had gone to Mount Vernon High School, nothing but Caucasians, and then I was thrust in an atmosphere of no one but Japanese. It was a shock. And I, all my friends were Caucasians. And uh, so it was a, an adjustment. I, at camp, the first, uh, my first exposure to camp life was very different because uh, I didn't speak Japanese. I couldn't speak proper Japanese. And so I feel I felt alone much of the time until I got used to being with the, the other Japanese. Thank you so much for visiting here today. And we are so proud to be able to give you your hard earned diploma and congratulations on graduating.